Hello and welcome to our event today. We are going to be doing everything fabric selection. So if you have questions about, I've been trying to pick fabrics for a quilt and I don't know what direction to go or do I worry about the scale of the print? Do I worry about the values? This is where we can have that discussion. So my name is Colleen Tauke and I'll be your, your presenter for this episode or this event today. Um, one of the things we uh, will have in the down, in the um, chat section is a link to color theory. So if you want to know more about color theory, because we read some pieces here and there and we start to put the puzzle, you know, pieces together in our head. But sometimes we need a refresher or maybe we've never even sat down to, to you know, read too much about color theory. So the link that will be in the chat section for this um, event will lead you to um, information about color theory and color combinations and more in-depth thought about color. So we're going to touch on it, but I think you could take probably an entire seminar or a semester course in color theory. So at least it'll get you some additional information that you can download, have in your hands, and maybe, you know, get that cup of coffee or tea and sit down and, and really kind of mull over. Uh, maybe you've never approached, okay, what does color theory even mean? And then you can get a grasp of that and maybe that will improve your next patchwork project. So remember in this, in the chat section, put where you're watching from, because I'd love to see where everyone, um, as you kind of wake up the country and maybe even our Canadian or overseas quilters, we'd love to see your names pop up and over and over. I recognize names and it's really kind of fun to know, Hey, you're watching. Okay. So we got Liz says howdy from beautiful, um, flower mound, Texas. So we got our Texan up there. Uh, Alma says hello from Salado, Texas, I think. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. I'm sorry if I didn't. A little town with no stoplights. Hey, I lived in a county in the state of Iowa where there was an entire county where there was only one stoplight. So I know what rural living is all about. <laughs> when I tell people that, they, they wonder if I lived on the moon or something, but the entire county only had one stoplight. I'm not sure if it still does, but that was not that many years ago. So welcome, and uh, we're glad you could join us. Paula says, hello from Nova Scotia. We've got our overseas quilter. Good deal. And Dottie says, hello from hot, sunny Florida. It's the first, oh, it's your first time here. Well, welcome. We are so glad that you joined us for our event today. We're going to get into the hot and sunny later in the week. I think we're going for 90 degrees tomorrow here. So, um, but... When we're indoors and we're working with color, every day is perfect for sewing and quilting. So the, the main four topics that I want to uh, touch on today are color, which we talked about just briefly. We're going to touch on. Then we're going to talk about value. What does that mean in relation to color? Then we're going to talk about scale, scale of print and design within a quilt. And then we're going to talk about texture. Not texture as in something we eat that's either rough or crunchy, but texture as in the design that kind of lifts off the design, uh, our quilt patchwork and gives it depth to what we're doing. So those are our four topics. I have brought out some of my faithful friends here so that I have some examples. So if you see something in a quilt and you go, wait a minute, what about just put in the comment section what your question is and they'll convey it to me um, through my moderator, okay? So color. Color is one of those things that each of us sees a little bit differently. After all of my years of working in quilt shops and fabric stores, of which I've been in at least one, two, three, four, maybe five different places over the years, I realized that we all see color a little bit differently. Our eyes are more sensitive to certain value, uh, different colors. And sometimes when I would be helping someone pick out fabric, they would be like, okay, I don't know where to go. I've got one piece. What do I add to it? And as I pulled colors out, maybe it was a red or maybe it was a green. And they saw it with more of a rust or a brown tone. So depending on how you view color, 
it can change what you select. And you know what? Quilts are really a personal choice. If it looks good to you and you enjoy the things you, you have pulled to put in a quilt, that is totally fine. No one else has to be over the moon about the colors because quilting is something we do to satisfy ourselves, something we do to be creative, to be inventive, and to keep our mind busy so that it it's really good for the brain to be problem solving all the time. So if colors look good to you, don't worry about what other people think because sometimes I have people say, even to me, what, were she, what was she thinking? Or what were you thinking? Why did you use this? And it's because I see color a certain way. So that's okay when it comes to color. A lot of us tend to gravitate to certain colors. And in those years of working in shops, I knew right away that if we got in a whole line of purples, I knew which clients were going to gravitate to those. And as soon as they walked in the door, I'd say, we got a new selection just for you. And, and they gravitated to those colors repeatedly because they enjoy them. Other quilters kind of go all over the board. They'll try a little bit of everything. So you kind of have to decide, am I going to try something outside of my comfort zone? Or am I totally fine being in that comfort zone and staying there? I know I have to force myself to use colors like orange and yellow because they aren't my favorite colors. I tend to gravitate, gravitate and you can kind of see it in here, blues and pinks and aquas are kind of the colors I gravitate to. But I've learned that by adding those colors, blue uh, across the color wheels, orange, and that um, really does a lot for sparking the color. So sometimes adding that color across the color wheel, as you learn about color theory in the um, download that we have available today, what colors maybe you want to try adding into a quilt to kind of give it some life, to bring it, um, bring out the colors even. Because by adding something as a contrast or across the color wheel, it will brighten the colors that you use within a quilt. Okay, let's look at some of the examples that I have pulled out um, because it, it does spark interest when you start seeing, okay, color. Now, this quilt was created, I have to hold it up here, at least part of it, was created with a set of pre-cuts. So if you have issues picking out and say brights are not my thing, I was using pre-cuts that had all bright colors within, I'm trying to remember, they were five, five inch squares, I believe, is what they originally were. And so I went ahead and picked up something that had brights in a whole collection so that it would force me to kind of get into those colors, to use that yellow, to use that orange, and have a little fun with it. So if using a lot of color is kind of scary, Wade in easily with maybe a little pre-cut pack and see what you see if you like using those bright colors. Now, because this has so many bright colors in it, trying to figure out something in a design to make was like, okay, these are a lot of bright colors and it's really kind of outside my comfort zone. What can I do to calm down all of the colors so that it doesn't turn into a lot of really dense pops of color, my eye doesn't know where to go. So I picked a white on white as the background and then created these stars so that each of those bright colors could have a place to live. And I did them in pairs. So I did um, half square triangles is what I was doing. So I created, and then it's like, how do you scrap them up? So I decided everybody's gonna meet up with a pair on the outside edge. And then whatever was left was gonna end up in the inside. So that was my thought process and organizing that pairs on the outside and then whatever was going to happen, whatever was left was going to live on the inside of the star. So that way I could play with those bright colors, have a little fun because they're all about the same value. You'll notice there's not really a much, much of a difference. And if you have a hard time figuring out value, whether or not it falls into a light or a dark, take your phone take a picture of the fabrics, 
then go into the edit portion. And at the very bottom, most of our phones, you'll see three rings that overlap. And they kind of make a triangle shape. That is where you can go in and change the color of the photo to monochromatic, which means it can be black and white. And it will pick up all of the values. And then you'll notice that these are all about the same value, which helps hold the star together, popped. And then with the light gives you enough contrast to get the star to actually be noticeable in the quilt. So that trick with your phone of taking the picture, going into edit, go into the symbol that has the three overlapping rings, it kind of looks like half of a um, Olympic rings. <laughs> so they're kind of stacked in a, a triangle and then slide over and you can find monochromatic and that will give you the value of lights to darks. So you know if you've got um, enough lights, mediums, or darks, or in the brights case, that if they're all about the same value, then you want something maybe as a contrast as your background. So that's a really good um, way to look at that. Another one that I was working on, and this was a sample from something I did a long time ago. These are um, stripes. And every time I look at this quilt, or zigzags, every time I look at this, I think all of you also, if you're in my age range, are thinking Charles Schultz, Charlie Brown, because this is the Charlie Brown quilt. The zigzags remind me of his shirt every single time. But if you'll notice that orange is a little bit or um, kind of an amber orange color. It's a little bit lighter, but against a light background, the zigzag holds together across this quilt. And that way with a white background or a light, it could be light gray or something like that if you want, but something very light, it helps keep those values together so that it makes that continuous zigzag across the quilt. So we're looking at color, we're looking at value. And one other thing that I wanna point out is some, um, some of the texture or the scale and texture we got going on here. Karen says, hi from San Diego. Wonderful. Visiting Arkansas. Okay. You're half, you're, you're getting closer to me. Um, oh, and Karen, fabulous. You were with us in Bali. And so I know who Karen is. Hi, Karen. <laughs> that was a fabulous trip. So if you ever, if, if National Quilter Circle decides to go back to Bali with craft tours, you all have to join me because it was a fabulous trip. And we got to have so much fun learning about batik fabrics that I wanna go back with an empty suitcase. <laughs> Liz says, hello from Alberta, Canada. So we've got our Canadian, um, wa Canadians watching. And Brigitte, say, uh, uh, Brigitte, uh, Brigitte, I don't know how to pronounce it properly, is watching from France. So we've got another overseas quilter. Fabulous that you're joining me. And I'm sorry if I misspelled or mispronounced just a little bit. Okay. So in this one also, I want to look at the scale of the designs because the outer border is just a, um, what we call grunge fabric. It's a very tonal fabric. So it reads pretty much navy blue, kind of has, or a royal blue. It has a little lighter spots in it, but it's pretty much just reads as blue. If I hold this up to the camera, I think you can see the dots right away. Look at the scale of these dots. They're big. They're fun. It's a green on green design. The blue at the top is probably, uh, I think this one's called suede possibly. It's a tonal, but it has a little bit lighter tone than the actual border. And then if we go down to the orangey colored one, you see kind of a tonal there too. It's got that lighter yellow, but it has some little speckles in it of color. So the scale changes from not much of anything here to some big dots here to smaller um, swirls here with some tiny dots. And then this blue happens to be another dot from the same fabric line as the green. And then I have to always have my token plaid. So here's the token plaid for this one. It's the very, it's very similar in color to the original orangey color here. It's got that light in it, but it's got a little bit darker color. But I love to put plaids and stripes into quilts just because it's so unexpected. It makes the eye go, oh, there's something to look at. 
kind of like, oh, squirrel. <laughs> and as quilters, we really enjoy um, when people look at a quilt for more than 10 seconds because their eye is going to, oh, look, look at this, look what, what's used here so that it has some interest. And then back to another green, this one might be a little harder to catch. It has a little tiny stripe in the background and it has some dots on the green at the bottom. So two greens that are similar, two oranges that are similar, two blues that are similar. Making them each have a friend within the quilt gives it continuity. So if I would have left out one of the greens, this poor green at the top would have been like an orphan. He would have nobody on the block that looks like him in green. So we have this kind of a matchup so that everybody is paired with another blue, another green, or another kind of orangey amber colored. And that kind of gives the eye someplace like, oh, look, there's kind of a repeat. There's a pattern, but there's fun textures in, involved. So by varying those up, you can have, you can give your eye something interesting to look at, especially when you're creating maybe something for a small person, a little person. It could be a laptop, though, for um, a grown-up, too, while you're at it. Okay. Now, we talked about things that had distinct background fabric. So color has um, a lot of place for the eye to rest when it gets to a background or a light. But not every quilt has that. So we're going to look at some um, quilts that don't have as much quiet space, but they're just as much fun. Now, my one granddaughter will say, Grandma, that looks like my quilt, but mine's upstairs. Well, this happens to be a second one made in the similar version. It's actually a, if I can fold it so you can actually see the block itself, it was a kind of a crazy quilt block made from um, 10 inch squares. Whoops, I got to fold this a little bit further this way. 10 inch squares that were cut apart and then re, uh, making a nine patch, but kind of a crazy cut up nine patch and how you can realign the pieces. So when I went to pick fabrics for this, they are mostly from this. I think these were all from the same line. They were, now that I think about it. These were 10 inch pre-cuts. That's what it was, 10 inch pre-cuts. And included in that were something that had something light. And this has a light background. There were, and this has um, a pale pink background. Then we had two that had pink backgrounds. With a dark chocolate brown like this, if it didn't have something close or some other buddy to go with it, it would be kind of a hole in the quilt. Something dark sends, sometimes sends our eye to look just at that spot and nothing else. But with this chocolate brown background, it kind of has somewhat of a buddy to go with. And then remember, I like stripes and plaids. So there's the token stripe that got was in this one, which made me fall in love with this grouping even more. So though it's very busy, we've got a lot of different patterns, a lot of scale going on here. We've got bigger sock monkeys. We've got dots. We've got tiny little sock monkeys and designs in toys in this one. We've got some kind of line um, not really truly a plaid, but a check kind of thing going on in all three of these and that fun stripe to add into it. So as you put those blocks together, you could divide up. If you think that's way too much color for me, I can't run block to block. You could put sashing between the blocks and give yourself a quiet space. But because I love the sock monkey fabric so much, so much, I just put block to block. So it's busy but your eye jumps around to all the different things. Now, truth be told, the reason why I fell in love with this, I didn't used to like the sock monkey. I thought he was kind of strange until I learned that the sock monkey was made from socks from my hometown, Knitting Mill, Fox River Mills. And so then it was like, oh, but that's something that reminds me of home where I grew up. And so the fox, the, uh, the, Sock monkey has become kind of a, a reminder of home. So that silly little face with the red smile, um, and this is kind of the baby version of the sock monkey, uh, became part of this quilt in the section of crazy quilt blocks, lots of color, um, just a lot of fun. So 
you know, if you haven't done something like that where it's really, really busy, maybe it's time to create a small one or even if it's just a table runner, try it out and see what you think of lots of color. Okay, Deidre says, good evening from South Africa. I'm glad you're here. We are reaching the reaching the globe. I love this. Joanna, uh, Joanna says hello from Brazil. So we've got South uh, South America included. And good morning from Mason City, Iowa. Mason City, that's almost my hometown. <laughs> I went to junior college in Mason City. Wonderful. Okay. Since we're on the busy quilt and we're talking about a little bit about scale and texture, um, this quilt was created with another grouping of fabrics. Now, you can pick fabrics outside of a selected designer's group. It's always, always one way to go. Pick one fabric you like and then go off and pick others. But like in the sock monkey fabric, this one was also came from a collection of fabrics. And so designers create collections that have a lot of texture. It's a great way to learn to um, include different scale, different designs, stripes, dots, because they tend to include those in fabric lines. So if you have a hard time picking colors that go together and you're like, I like this one, but I don't know what else. See if there's more fabrics in the fabric line. Some lines include up to 40 fabrics, which is a lot. Other fabric lines may only be 10 or 11 prints that go together somewhat. So if you have a hard time, this is a really great way, kind of a training wheels way to pick fabrics that go together until you get comfortable of to go to a larger shop maybe and just go a little rogue and pick your own fabrics. Funny thing is sometimes shops will break up lines and say, these are tonal, we'll put those in the tonals. This is a stripe, we'll put that in the stripe because maybe some of the pieces in the line are missing now because they've had it for a while. And you go off and pick fabrics and you will all of a sudden notice, hey, these go together. And as you look at the end of the bolt, you'll find out they're the same designer. <laughs> so, so those um, fabric lines may not all be displayed together once they start to get a little bit picked over and some of the pieces are missing. They may get put into um, the pinks, the purples, the blues, and then into the stripes and into the dot section in those larger shops. So don't be worried about, you know, if they don't have a lot of pieces in the line, you can go off and pick other pieces too. But this was um, Katie's twirl, I'm trying to think. I think that's what I named it. It's been a while since this was happened to be out there that um, I own the design, but it, it did appear in a magazine at one point. The background on this, some might say, what were you thinking? But I wanted to use the, the fabric line. I did not want to use just plain white on this kid's quilt. I wanted something that had some fun. So therefore, those dots became the background. And it is a little bit busy, but it's a lot of fun also. In this fabric line, it had the pinks and the purples and the uh, uh, aquas, a little bit of green. The fun part is that all of the fabrics are in the token stripe that's in there. So, you know, I like stripes, like I said, that stripe. So all of the fabrics that went together from that line got used. And this was a half square triangle method, kind of similar to the gemstone um, table toppers that we have on our site where you can find all of, um, all of the different gems. You can find um, emerald eyes, uh, sa sapphire shimmer, uh, radiant ruby, um, trying to think, what other ones do I have out there already? Um, there's a, a topaz treasure. So all the gemstones are out there and soon to come some holiday ones too, but half square triangle method. And by keeping grouped colors together, you can see that the pinwheel in the center goes well. And then outward from there, trying to keep those colors kind of consistent. So it makes a pattern, but darker colors bring the eye to your attention. So look where the darkest tone is. The darkest is on the tips of the star and then into the pink and then into a light background. And then that medium purple ends up doing the pinwheel in the very center. So think about that's your value. The darkest, if you want attention brought to a certain area, the darkest color will take your eye there fastest. 
So um, maybe you're putting, you're making blocks that are going to have kind of a ring around them, but you're going to put a pinwheel in the center. Do you really want to see the pinwheel and get your attention there? So the darkest value may need to go there to see the pinwheel in the center and then go with maybe mediums out from there. So um, also texture. If you want to add texture to like binding and things, uh, I use a stripe from the line. This is a smaller scale stripe than what's the piece that's within the quilt. Don't be afraid to use those stripes to do things like bindings and inner borders. They are playful. That's a great way to use the stripe to your advantage and um, come up with something besides maybe just matching the outer border on a quilt to do your binding. And for me, I guess if it's gonna be a kid's quilt, I never wanna put white on the outside edge just because my prayer is that this quilt gets drug around on the floor behind some little toddler and a white binding would be gray in no time at all. So by putting that, that stripe or a darker color on that border, you can kind of camouflage that till it needs to be laundered, okay? So we've got, again, scale. We've got um, nothing. This is pretty much all mediums and small. The designs in here, think about the size of the blocks or border that you're going to be using and then the scale of the print within the fabric. None of these happen to be a large scale. They're all in the smaller end or more medium to small. So they fit within the cut pieces. So you can actually see what the print intentionally or originally was. When you get to different scale, if you get to large cabbage roses, and I do have something with flowers later we can look at, that if I were to cut that down into small pieces, I would lose the continent, continuity of the flower and it'll appear as a different color every time I cut it. So small, smaller pieces really do work well with smaller scale or at least medium scale of prints so that you get a density of a, an appearance within that piece. Okay, do we have anybody else? Nope, nobody else has popped in. So, okay. Let's talk um, adding texture. So many quilts that um, a lot of people times, sometimes people say, how many quilts do you own? And I'm like, well, a lot. Because if you're going to be talking about quilts and teaching about quilts, these are all my lesson plans. <laughs> so I still own a lot of the quilts that I've made. And this one I made quite a while back. Now you can see the color that I really love. Um, after my own dad's heart, I love the color blue and this crisp blue um, really spoke to me when it first came in. It was a, it's a batik fabric. So the original was this really pretty kind of royal blue that I loved. And um, there's a light blue with little dots in it that I also liked. I'm like, okay, I can use those two, but I need something to add texture something for the eye. I can't just put blue, 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 blue. It'd just be boring. And maybe not boring, but it wouldn't have as much interest. There are times when it's appropriate to do that. That's okay. But in this case, this fabric had come in. It's also a batik. I was trying to keep kind of everything in the batik um, genre in this case, because the crispness of the color, if you've never used batiks, Go look at them, pull one out and look at the, the color. It's very, very clear colors, very vibrant. And this fabric, look, it has yellow and it has orange. The two colors I really don't like that well, but in this quilt, it adds a lot of interest. Now, if I open this all the way up, you'll notice that it radiates around from the center. And so this is the very center of the quilt. This is a quarter. And you can see that it adds that texture, that, ooh, what's there? Um, along with the blues, it has a little tiny bit of a green to it, but it was the perfect batik to add to all these blues to give it some texture so your eye just keeps following it along. Now, I had my blues, two colors, a light blue and a medium blue or darker blue. I had my texture with my... I guess you would call that probably a medium, but it, it kind of reads as a dark because it has a dark background. But I needed some light, but I didn't want to go white because it was too stark. It's too hard on the eyes. Well, a batik 
we had on the shelf actually has just a hint of a peach, which is orange, a hint of a yellow, and a hint of a blue, kind of like a watercolor wash, really light. But I, and when it was on the bolt on the shelf, you only see about an inch and a half of the fabric. But when you take the bolt out and unroll it, you will see what the color does across the bolt. So because it had this really light color wash, it went well with the blues. It had a hint of the yellowy, orangey color, just a hint enough that it would be the perfect background for this quilt. So this one was a class I taught quite a few years ago. Um, and someone else's pattern. I really appreciate their design a lot. Um, but so we don't have this pattern available out there because it is another designer's. But I wanted you to look at the color texture that is added by putting in maybe that fabric that you didn't really think you would ever gravitate to. And how to use a background that might have just a hint of a color so that it's not a stark contrast in there. Okay, um, let's see, how much time do we have left? Oh, we're at half an hour already. Okay, Barb says, hi from Georgetown, Ontario, Canada. Fabulous. Thank you for sharing your knowledge with us and, and enjoy your show. I appreciate that you are here. The whole reason that I am a contractor with this company is to share quilting and I love doing it. Okay, because quilters are so much fun. So that's, that's always been my goal is to have a job where it's just fun. So working with all of you and um, having conversations about color and value, scale and texture today is a fun um, approach to quilting. So all of that said, all of the scale and the texture and the size of the design, I got hold of a grouping of fabrics. And once I looked at them, I was like, oh, they're all teeny, tiny, little dots or flowers or checks or writing on them that was really, really small. And I thought, this is going to be boring, but there's enough color change that made interest. So I played around with the design and sometimes you find a, a, sec, a group of fabrics and you want to use them, but you got to find just the right pattern to pair it up with. And until you do, they don't really fit together. So I started working on this as a design. And I'm trying to even remember the name of this. I did this so long ago. But it also appeared in a magazine years ago. But you'll notice how I put the colors together. They kind of look like spools laying on side or picket fences. By putting the reds in diagonals and the creams in diagonals and then greens together in a diagonal, can create a pattern that way and let that small scale just kind of ride in the background. So all those little tiny pieces, all those tiny scale, just red as color. And the interest came in the arrangement of the units instead. So sometimes color can be used just as a continuity across. And these are different prints. They look like they're all one, but because this is a tiny leaf, a dot, a check, and I'm not sure what's over here. This one has words on it. They all read as a red. So color can be used that way too when the scale is very similar and the tone or the value. I take use your phone to change it to monochromatic, and then it will read across the diagonals as a design. And let's see if I can hold up enough of it so you can see. There we go. So sometimes we're using it that way. And as I work, as we work through these quilts, people are going to say, are there any rules? And I'm going to say, mm, there are suggestions. There aren't any hard and fast rules, um, at least not in my quilt world. I like to try everything. People would sometimes have asked, well, what, what is your favorite genre? What's your favorite design or flavor? And I say, I've tried everything. <laughs> sometimes it's a really great hit and sometimes it's a eh, close. But I try just about every colorway. I try patterns at least once. I'm not huge about making things over and over again. I like variety. Um, this is a quilt that I made years ago. Um, again, look at the look at the contrast. And this happens in the contrast in the quilt behind me too. Sometimes you see the whole star. 
sometimes the points get kind of lost, but they're soft. And that's okay. It gives your eye something to go, oh, what, what about this guy over here? And what's, what's in this one over here? We've got yellow pit points. That's okay. So it's fun to, to play around a little bit with it. You don't have to have high contrast at every, every second in your quilt. Sometimes it's a soft contrast. But by putting in at least, if you have one light yellow, I put in a couple yellows, two or three in this one. Make sure he has a buddy so that he's not all alone in the quilt, but that contrast can, can be varied. So that's okay. And again, this was a background that was a very light cream. It has a tiny little flower uh, bud in it. So it has some texture. It's not totally flat in the background. If you want to have a totally solid, um, I've seen absolutely beautiful quilts done where everything is a solid. And, but it really does um, depend then on the colors used and the values in the color. So that, because texture is not going to be as, as vital in those quilts. And other times it's the center focus. So um, let's see, let me get this one because I want to talk about that scale. Now, the fabric that I used in the border of this, this is where I wanted to talk about. If I were to cut pieces, fairly small pieces, even larger ones, I suppose, out of this, sometimes my pieces might read black. Sometimes my pieces might read gold. Other times they might read green. So I reserved this fabric to be a border where I could see all of the colors and read all of the colors within the quilt. Because if I were to cut it up, it would appear kind of blotchy on the inside of my quilt because the pieces are fairly small. Because if I were to cut wedges and if they weren't all cut from the exact same spot in the fabric, I would have some of them black, some of them gold, some of them maybe more of a green. And then the inside triangles would kind of get lost and mushy in the center. So I reserved that larger print as an outer border. And that way, all of the I used it as the inspiration for the fabrics that I chose to go inside this. Now, yes, they did come from a line of fabrics, but I didn't use everything in the line because I wanted just certain contrasts in certain places. So I went and looked for two greens. There's red, uh, um, two reds that I've used. And then the cream here is the lightest value in the kind of the drawing or outlining of the flowers. And I wanted that to kind of read as the background to help the star kind of pop out there. So the reds were used in the outer points. Let's see if I can get this up so you can see the very center is kind of has a medallion style to it. Here we go. Oh, higher yet. It's hard to work with a camera when you're trying to show, there you go. See that medallion kind of across in the center? So I got my continuity there. I used my darkest greens to make that kind of ring that goes around the center medallion and then worked out from there. Now this is, is not made in rounds. It's actually made as blocks. The pattern for this is available on, on our um, website. So if you look under free patterns, you'll find this one. I think it was called Christmas gathering or fan, something gathering, but you can find it. There's a picture of a thumbnail of it very easily. This has all been done paper pieced so that all those odd angles and triangles are not easy to cut. So by doing foundation paper piecing, I could get the accuracy, but look at the contrast and then you'll understand why that values that um, in color really become important in order to get certain things to pop out in a design. And that scale, these are all fairly small because the pieces again are small. So it's important to think about that. So um, using large prints as borders as inspiration for the fabrics we pick within our quilt is a really great way to um, get started. Maybe you find that big floral first. Sometimes when people are just beginning and I'd be working in a shop, I would say, go pick one really fabulous um, print or design that you really like, and then we'll feed off of that. We'll use that 
for then what direction to go. A couple other um, samples, and then I want to talk really quick on some new things I'm working on that I've just selected the fabrics for. Okay, you want busy, here we go. Here's my token stripes, my plaids. Look how fun the contrast is. Sometimes it's soft. Sometimes it's really sharp between the red and the light blue. Sharp contrast. You see that split star right away. The next guy down in that funky stripe, he's there. You have to look for him. But sometimes it's good to get the viewer to really look for something in a quilt. And yep, the stripes go in all directions. That's totally fine with me. If you are not fine with that, then stay away from stripes. Um, but then I've got some more stripe. Um, this actually has a real soft stripe to it, but look how it gets a motion going. You, your eye starts to look around within it and the split star there also. So think about that color and the values. Make sure that you um, try out, if, you're, if a pattern calls for lights, mediums, and darks, make sure you include all of those so that you get that texture within your quilt. Um, let's see, let's do this one last for um, our designs here. You can make a quilt with black and gray and white, of course. I left the dark black as the border. I used it within my blocks. Let's see if I can hold this up so you can see just one block. The block is right there. And see how that black is, re, um, is used within the star, kind of towards the center, and then on the outer edges. So I use the solid just to give it really good weight. Then I used a gray that has a little bit of texture to it. Let me hold it up to the camera so you can see it has kind of a, a diamond cut kind of look to it. The black and the black background with the dots, that's the busy one. That's a, my fun scale there. And I had never used a print that had script on it. So all of these have script instead of just being a solid white or something with dots, it has script written across it. So it gave it a fun texture and kind of simulates lines or stripes also. So that gave another dimension. So I have, have my stripe, <laughs> I have my dots, I have some solid, and the, the gray has some small texture to it. So it has depth to it and creates a, a fun design. Now, Really quick to finish. I found some, I was picking up fat quarters. This has this an adorable little box in it. And as I look at it, the inspiration be, I can pick green, I could pick yellow, orange. Oh great, those are not my two favorite colors, but I love the aqua in there and then there's gray. I tried a lot of colors with it, but look how this yellow is fun with it. And then, and to add even more yellow, I found a dot, let's put it on this side, a dot with yellow in it that has the two colors of gray. Now that would be fun. You could also add, I might see if I can find some rusty orange to go with that. Just because that fox is so adorable, I think he needs a little accent of his own color in there. But that's an inspiration for a future project. I found a, a pre-coordinated bundle of fabrics recently. And evidently the fox is the very popular and the owl and the hedgehog are very popular right now. Look, there's a stripe. Yes. Small scale, fun gray, kind of a busy scale. This one's a little bit um, larger scale and it has a white background. So we have two with blue. We've got a token peach, but there's a little peach in this one. And the gray, a uh, appears in both of these. So pretty much everybody has somebody that's kind of similar to them. And the fox in this one really picks up that orangey color in this one. So I figure these guys together, but that's a lot of texture. That's a lot of things going on. So I picked up an aqua and here's my quiet space. See how the aqua is going to be the quiet tone to go with that? So be watching, you'll see a, probably a project come up with that. And let's see, we're getting a little long. I picked up two fabrics the other day. I saw this one first and I'm like, oh, I have to have a Christmas piece. And then it's like, what do I do with it? Well, 
because I love the Christmas green, we're going to do something with this Christmas green to go with it. And maybe an accent of a red. But I have a lot of reds in my stash. So we'll probably pull out something to go there. But look, light, a medium. The scale is different. The dots are a long ways apart here. We've got trees. I'll have to make sure that with these trees that I cut something that will include at least a few of the trees in each block. So I can't go too small or I will have a lot of dot and not much tree. So be thinking about a pattern that will go with that one. And then the last one that I'm going to show you is the lightest contrast quilt I have ever created. And it's still just a top. I just bought back batting for it or backing this last weekend. Um, a pre, um, pre set of pre-cuts that I bought and then decided, oh my, this is really light. It has a few darker pieces in it. It has some olive green, some gray, some pink, but look how light the contrast is here. This is going to be the softest quilt I have ever, contrast I've ever made. Now, there was this really fun, if I can get the camera to pick it up, I think. These are, these are texts. So I've been trying to work with fabrics that had wording in them. And so the colors go around and around. And I wanted that to be the columns through the diamonds. I wanted to make columns with the pre-cut so that I could put them on point and match them up with a grunge background. So it'd be light. So everything is going to be really light. But then I had to frame it. I need some place for the eye to stop because I've got such like values. The scale is all kind of similar. I picked one that has a little bit more scale to it. And look, when I cut it this direction, it does stripes. And there was a plaid in this in this selection. So the plaid's the inner border. I've got, I'm using the, the simulated stripe on the outside edge for the outer border. And then I'm going to bring this plaid back as my binding to finish off this one. So be looking in the future to see how the um, I think we're calling this one charming. I think I'm just calling it charming at this point. It just has that it's made from charms. So it's just gonna be a very soft contrast. See how it works out because the quilting will be adding the texture to finish it off. Um, let's see, we've got Liz saying hello from Palm Beach. Catherine says, I like the red and green one. See, everybody likes different things. That's why I try to include a lot of things. Margie says, I love the night and day block. Yes. The, the fun part is to try something different just to see how it all works out. I know I've gotten a lot of comments in the past about the quilt behind me. And um, sometimes when I look at it on camera, there's pieces in this that like just totally drop out. Like where did the, those are yellow points in there. And it looks like that hexi is just kind of floating in the center because it's such a light contrast but it gives interest to each of the blocks in there. So color, value, scale, the size of the print, and then the texture. The, how does it, does it make you want to touch the quilt? Texture can also be added with machine quilting. So those are the things that we talked about today. Next time when we're back, I, hmm, I'm trying to think, what do I have as a project? I think I have an I Spy quilt coming up. So Remember that the download for the color theory um, document is in the comments. So go back and download that and enjoy reading about, um, I think you even put the QR code up for you. So all you have to do is shoot your camera at it and it'll take you right to the color theory document. And I'm so glad that you joined me today to talk about fabric selection.